Hi guys. It's Robert. I am doing another ASMR mixology video. For those of you who aren't familiar, this is the series where I take you through step by step and show you how to make an awesome, great tasting cocktail. Today, we're going to be making an amaretto sour, but not just any amaretto sour. It's a special recipe. This is the recipe by mixologist bartender Jeffrey Morgenthaler. He's a really cool guy. Um, love his stuff. And he makes a recipe for the amaretto sour that uses a little bit of high proof bourbon in it to give it a little more kick and a little more body because a regular amaretto sour is kind of a very weak drink not just in alcohol content but just like there's not much to it so let's listen to some nice jazz in the background here and um we'll go through the drink so the ingredients as i mentioned we have some Amaretto, this is the Trader Joe's brand Amaretto, not the best, I actually really wouldn't suggest this one, but I have it, so I'm going to use it, I would suggest at least Di Serono or something better, this one, it's a little bit on the sweet side. That, uh, Music might be a touch loud. It's really a little better. And um, amaretto is, it's not necessarily almond flavored, but that's how a lot of people describe it. Amaretto is actually, um, it's made with like pits of stone fruits, like uh, peaches, pears, and such. So, for the extra oomph for using Booker's, which is a cask strength bourbon, you guys have seen this before. I use this in my, um, whatchamacallit, mint julep video. It's very strong. It'll kick your ass. It's 63.95% alcohol, which is 127.9 proof. To put that in comparison, this is 18% uh, the amaretto, so big difference there. So we have those two. Um, those are our liquors, and since this is sour, we're going to do it in the nice traditional style. So I'm going to be using egg white, lemon juice, and sugar. If you have simple syrup, that's even better than the sugar. But I don't have any made right now, and I didn't feel like making any, so I'm just going to use the plain sugar. The um, simple syrup would just be uh, two parts sugar to one part water. Just heat it up and mix a nice little simple syrup. But um, a lot of people get scared about anything with egg whites in it. Don't. That's dumb. Literally everything in a cocktail kills bacteria. The alcohol, for one, is... I mean, think about it, you, can, you like can clean your wound with alcohol if you had vodka. So, um, alcohol kills bacteria. Lemon juice, citric acid kills bacteria. Freezing temperature kills bacteria. So, um... Don't worry about egg whites. <laughs> You're going to be fine. And the egg whites, um, a lot of people think it's like gross, but it's really not. It just gives it like a full, richer body. And you'll see what I mean. It's more frothy and things like that. So let us begin 
Um, we're going to put everything here in our mixing glass and we're going to give it a dry shake first, which means without ice. And that's to kind of froth it and then we shake it with ice, strain it into our cocktail glass. So why don't we actually go ahead and do our um, egg white first. And to do that, I need to pull around the trash can real quick. And what I'll do is I'll get an egg. I'm going to crack it. And then we're just going to go back and forth between the eggshell to get the egg white out. You'll see what I mean. It's a pretty thick one. There we go. didn't use the entire thing, and that was intentional. I just wanted to use a bit, and so that's in there. And we will add the rest of our ingredients here. Um, we're going to do a spoonful of sugar. These are very small spoons, so don't be alarmed by my large spoonful. So you do want a bit of sugar in there because that's going to um, help it get that sweet and sour effect. You don't want it to just be all sour. It'd be a little gross. So we got that going. Let's go ahead and get our lemon juice going. Any, any lemons are okay. So I'm going to get my jigger here, which is this little metal measuring cup. It has a two ounce pour on one side, one ounce on the other. We're looking for an ounce of lemon juice. And all we do is get our citrus juicer. Put the lemon in, flat side down, and just squeeze. That's a full ounce right there. So we're going to do an ounce and a half of that amaretto. That's one full ounce right there. And we're going to do another half. This trigger is nice because it has, um, oops, I totally did more than half there. It's more like three quarters. I was going to say that this trigger is nice because it has little lines inside to show you where the half is. Oh well, okay. 
This isn't like baking. You don't have to be completely precise. <laughs> and then we're going to do three quarters ounce of this Booker's bourbon. Just a notch there. And that's all of our ingredients. So we have our lemon juice, our um, egg white, our sugar, our amaretto, and the bookers. So I'm going to go get a glass to shake this with and do the dry shake. So dry shake without ice. Just put the glass in to our shaker. Tap it on the butt. And give it a shake. Now we're going to get some ice and shake it again. Looks like my seal was a little bad. I tried to be too quiet. <laughs> Didn't hit it hard enough. Let's ice our glass first. step away to do this loud shake here with the ice. Okay, you want to give it a really good shake. This thing's been stubborn lately. Come on, baby. Here we go. So let's clear the area so we can get the money shot. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's get a little fancy. Let's put a little lemon on top here. Just a little. Lemon peel. So let's give this thing a taste. You can see it's got nice like foam on top. That's from the egg white. It's almost like an orange Julius if you've ever had that. Yeah, that's really good. Like I said, the thing about amaretto sours is they're weak and they're like they can be like too sweet and cloying and gross and this is like 
perfect with a little bit of the bourbon. It's got the sweet, it's got the sour, but it's got like a little bit of kick. Not too much, it's got like body to it. It's creamy, it's delicious. Yeah, okay. Well, what do you say? We move this party downstairs and have a little happy hour chat. Sound good? Okay, well, cheers guys. Um, trying something different with the setup here. Um, this is obviously downstairs in the office. I have the microphone down here on the table because I figured you probably wouldn't be able to hear me from up there. So, um, yeah, welcome to happy hour. I didn't do this for the last one, I don't think. And if you're new to the series, this is sometimes I take the chance to sit, have a drink with you guys and just update you and talk and stuff like that. I really am liking this though. This is like, I don't like that amaretto, like I said. This, totally doable though. Um, so what is there to say? Well, it's currently like 11.45 on Saturday. So this is my life. <laughs> I've been pretty good lately. I've been a bit busy. I've been having like really weird roadblocks not nothing huge just like I, I told you about all of them so far in other videos but like I was having like weird back problems early this week which they spontaneously got a bit better they come and go I need to get back to the chiropractor <laughs> um so I had that and my computer was on the fritz but that's better too different stuff like that um pardon the traffic sounds streets right out there but other than that things have been pretty good um, just been working my job has been it's been good um, what I'm doing for those of you who aren't up-to-date familiar is I'm serving as what's called a psych assistant psychological assistant to a doctor that I had worked for previously um, he's a really great, like, world-class neuropsychologist, so he's a great supervisor to have. And he's supervising my hours towards licensure. <clears throat> so I had to get, you know, basically, um, like, another thousand hours or whatever towards um, licensure in the state of California. So after I get those hours, then I could take the exam to become a licensed psychologist. So... Um, that's all well and good however we're having a hard time finding me like independent cases where i'm not just basically being an assistant or a technician and instead i do the whole shebang from start to finish and it's my case entirely and that's because as a psych assistant i can't take insurance and it's hard to find people who don't have insurance or um, their insurance won't cover you know what we're doing and are willing to pay an out-of-pocket fee even though it is lower than you know the standard so it's been a challenge to try to find referrals for me so as a result lately I've been basically just doing a lot of testing a lot of neuropsychological testing which is like memory testing um, concentration logic you know basically all the different areas of the brain testing those and how they're functioning which is really interesting but I'm doing a lot of that and that's about it. Ideally, I want to have a good balance where I'm doing therapy cases, testing, and then also doing like um, for the testing, not just the, the testing portion, but like the reports, the interpretation and stuff like that. For the insurance cases that we do, I'm not allowed to do that portion of it. So it's a, it's a, um, <clears throat> you know, it's a building process. So I am thankful for the flexibility, you know, um, and it's nice that, you know, I'm in a position where, you know, I'm not getting quite as many hours as, as we had kind of agreed on at the outset, which is neither of our faults, but I'm, I'm getting enough. And the thing is, 
Um, luckily, my income isn't entirely dependent on that. So my book, things like that, that's really um, what's like keeping us going and stuff. So I'm thankful to have a diversified sort of income, which is um, sounds really cheesy, but it's helpful. Fun fact, if you go to Amazon.com and go to the main search bar, type in anxiety, see who you see at the top. <laughs> um, so I'm working on my second book. A lot of you guys know that I'm working on um, the Hardcore Self-Help Fuck Depression book, which will be the second in the series. And um, I have writer's block right now. It's a bad time for me to have writer's block because now's the time that I have like to really get writing. I have a few chapters written, like three or four, three and a half, whatever. And I, I was just having a hard time. I, I did like the easy stuff first. Easy meaning like the most apparent stuff, the things that make the most sense to me about how to help with depression. And then I finished that. I'm like, well, shit, what now? <laughs> So I um I gotta I gotta get on that. But I, I did um er, earlier this week I took some time and I made like a pretty good list of chapters that I could write. So I'm excited to get back into that. Um I might spend some time writing tomorrow actually. Um, but I wanna try to get that out um definitely before the baby comes in February. So that's got it's got a couple months for me to work on that and uh, I can do it. The other one, it's, it's interesting, they're different beasts, you know, the first book, the anxiety one, that thing just like, exploded out of me and I wrote it in like a week. And um, this, I learned a lot from, you know, doing this process with the first book. And this one's gonna be a little bit different. I think it's gonna be a little bit longer, still not huge, you know, but like my um, print version of, of my anxiety book is like a, more like a pamphlet, you know. And um, so I want to increase that a little bit, not too much. I'm still adopting the philosophy of, you know, um, the chapters are going to be exactly as long as they need to be. And I'm not going to make them longer just because I want more words. I'm going to say what I need to say, and then that's going to be it, you know. Um, but I'm going to try to cover a little bit more and stuff like that. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a different kind of beast, and I'm excited for it. I really want to get it done, and I think I'll be able to, for sure. And like I said, I learned a lot from this book, so I'm excited to just kind of go into this next one, armed with the knowledge that I've gotten, tons of feedback. You know, at this point, my book has 80-something 80, 80 reviews in the U.S. and 70-something in the U.K., so lots of feedback there, lots of personal emails from people. <laughs> I've talked to you guys about it and stuff, so definitely um, I have a lot of stuff to draw on there hmm. the um, some of you guys have asked about the pregnancy pregnancy is going well um, my wife is nearly to her third trimester now um, like I said baby's due in February uh, late February and uh, she's getting bigger. <laughs> it's really cute though because she's like she's a small person. She initially lost weight when she got pregnant Which happens sometimes with people of like her Body type and then she's been gaining back up the weight and now she's finally actually gaining weight from her previous But like you if you look at her from behind you can't tell if she's pregnant, you know, she turns and it's like whoa, there's a belly <laughs> um, But we are quite excited um, if any of you guys didn't catch in, uh, did I talk about it in a previous video? Maybe I just talked about it on Twitter. If you're not following me on Twitter, follow me on Twitter, at Duff the Psych. That's where I tell you stuff, <laughs> if you want to know things. Um, but we're having a boy, that's something that we know. He made it very known, he was very proud <laughs> in the ultrasound. <laughs> it was like, there's one leg, there's another leg, that's not a leg. <laughs> Um, and uh, so, yeah, we're having a boy, and um, everything's looking good so far. He's moving around now, and um, 
I'm very excited. Very excited. People ask if I'm nervous. I'm not nervous. I'm more nervous about the whole giving birth process, making sure, like, you know, like hoping that everything goes smoothly, my wife's healthy, kids healthy, all that stuff. About raising a kid, not. I'm not nervous about it. I know there's things that I'm not going to be able to predict. It's going to change things in ways that I probably assume that it won't. But I'm confident in our ability to adapt to that, you know. So it is what it is. I'm not going to screw them up too bad. And uh, I'm excited. It's 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 the type of thing where I'm not chomping at the bit. I don't want it to hurry up and be here. I'm enjoying the process. But when it comes, it'll be time. One thing that I haven't been doing a lot lately is I haven't been doing the vlog. Um, I was doing that a lot, you know, right when, prior to the move and when we moved and stuff. But <laughs> my life has been very boring and routine lately. You know, it's like I work, come home, I do more work. Um, and then we have like family time at night where we... We basically have been getting all of our blankets and pillows and throwing them on the floor in front of the TV, turning on the fireplace when it's cold and just like watching, you know, whatever shows we're watching. Right now I'm catching up on Gotham because I, I never watched all that series. So we're almost done with that now and um, do that. And then wife goes to bed. I either, you know, spend some leisure time playing games or doing more work. Before I go to bed and then that's it <laughs> so I haven't had a lot to talk to you guys about a lot to show you but um, yeah, we'll see maybe something exciting will happen soon and I'll be able to vlog about it we're thinking that we might do um, Thanksgiving here at our place instead of uh, going home home is not where our parents live home is here now you know and this is where we're going to be and the prospect of, of being able to entertain in our space, especially since our, you know, our second floor is so nice, like open, perfect for, you know, entertaining and stuff like that. So, um, I think we're going to do it here this year instead of going back to where our parents are. And that's a very exciting prospect. I'm excited to just be able to not travel, you know, cook, hang out with family, just I'm looking forward to it a lot it's kind of a it's kind of a weight off it'll be a little bit weird with the with some of the family that you know is kind of more set in their ways and stuff but what are you gonna do you gotta have boundaries at some point so um yeah I every time I sit down to do one of these every time I like sit down to do the the happy hour talk it's like I think that, oh God, I'm not going to have anything to talk about. And then suddenly it's like 20 minutes have gone by and I've been rambling the whole time. <laughs> um, I recognize that this is probably not the most triggering portion of the video for you, but I hope that um, it's been nice. I know that people kind of either really like the, the mixing part or they really like the life update or they like both, you know, so there's people in all different camps and um, I'm thankful for all of you. <laughs> I had a uh, little funny situation where somebody, uh, what was it? Somebody in my last video was like, oh, something about product placements. I go, product placements in ASMR now, unsubscribed. Um, I gotta say, if you're unsubscribing from me for any reason, you don't need to tell me. That's fine. You can go. <laughs> I don't know if it's supposed to have like an impact on me or something, but um, just divide one by 70 something thousand and see how small of a fraction that is. <laughs> and then you'll see that it's like, cool. Sayonara, you know. I have a lot of really, really, really good people in the community here, like in my network with you guys, and uh, it it doesn't make a difference to me if you don't like what I do and decide to leave because of it, because the people that are here are like the best people, you guys, 
you guys are like the best people. There's this um, there's this article that's really popular in the world of like um, online business or like uh, things like that. It's called a uh, God. I forget who wrote it. It's like one thousand. 1,000 true fans or 1,000 raving fans or something like that. And it's the idea that to really succeed, you don't need like a huge empire of, of, of fans and followers. You need, you know, 1,000 people who are like 100% on board with you. And, you know, um, that you, you can count on them. You know that they're going to, you know, be right along for the ride no matter what you do. And... I really feel that way, except, you know, it's not even a thousand, it's more than that. There's a lot of you guys, and, um, it's, it's, I wouldn't call it a loyalty, but, you know, it's, you guys get it, and, uh, there's no question about that, so, I appreciate you guys, um, I'm not offended by anybody that's trying to troll me or trying to intimidate me like that, um, you guys don't bother responding to them. That's because it doesn't matter, you know. Um, but I did want to say that I appreciate you. Uh, it just made me think of that. Anytime, that's, that's, that's it. Anytime somebody does something stupid like that, it makes me think of all of you guys who aren't them. And it's like, yes. <laughs> so I raise my glass to you. that might be it um it's pretty late i should finish this up and head off to bed tomorrow is sunday we're gonna go see specter the james bond movie it's obviously got mixed reviews but i can't not see it and i really like the new james bond movies um so we're gonna do that got a bunch of cleaning to do in the house which is super fun try to do a bit of writing Got to knock out a custom order. Really need to do that. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow morning. I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, guys, it's been real. I appreciate you. Thank you. And um, for these, if you have any suggestions about other cocktails you want to see me do, please let me know. Um, just write them in the comments. Um, things that I already know you want. Bloody Mary. Um the grandfather cocktail people have mentioned that a few times um that's about it well somebody said like a long island iced tea which i could do as well the uh bloody mary i will do i don't like bloody marys but i'm gonna try to do one that i do like i'm gonna try to make it one that i like so that i'll do at a certain point but um i'm not looking forward to it <laughs> that's why i haven't done it yet so that's that, and I'm going to finish this up, and I'll see you next time. Bye.